Hi, welcome to Scott Plays. Um, I hope you all had a good holiday season and 2018 is starting well for you all. And now, around this time of year, um, most or a lot of content creators um, look back on the previous year, um, do top tens and best ofs and that kind of thing. Um, I decided rather than doing that, I would look forward to 2018 and the games that I'm anticipating in terms of Kickstarters I backed last year but are due to um, receive this year, um, new releases and new Kickstarters that I'm looking forward to in the coming year, um, as well as um, older games and expansions for older games that I'm looking to pick up in the new year. First that I'm expecting to, to get and um, this was uh, meant to be releasing um, or delivering to, to backers this month but it looks like it's going to be pushed back till February and that is um, Shadow Rift Skittering Darkness. Um, a new expansion for the Shadow Rift um, deck building game. Um, Shadow Rift is a, a game I really like. It's a cooperative um, deck building sort of fantasy horror type game. Um, I believe if I remember correctly you can play up to four players with it um, but it supports solo play. And the solo play is actually really good. Um, it, it plays really well at all play accounts. Um, you play uh, heroes defending a village against um, various um, fantasy horror monsters that come out of uh, shadow rifts um, that uh, give the game its name. Um, and yeah, it's just just a really nice deck builder. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that, getting new monsters for that, and um, probably when that comes in, I will do a play of it on the channel, if not before. Um, although if it comes this month, then yeah, I'll probably wait till I get the the expansion before I do a play of it. After that, um, probably the next delivery I'll get will be Star Realms Frontiers. Um, now this is a new expansion to um, Star Realms, um, again a, another deck builder. Um, this one's more your, um, i trying to think, it's a deck builder with a market. Um, Shadow Rift is more like um, uh, what's the the game I'm thinking of? Uh, really well known deck builder. Anyway, you have different piles of um, card types that you can purchase from. Whereas Star Realms and Hero Realms and Cthulhu Realms all are um, the um, market row style deck builders um, and obviously Star Realms is sort of sci-fi um, ships battling each other. Um, normally it's played one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, head to head um, you know and it's, it's your, your typical do uh, X amount of damage to your opponent before they can do it to you type thing. Um, but the interesting thing that um, Frontiers is bringing into the game, and it, it was in Star Realms um, already, but only a, um, yeah, not very well integrated into Star Realms, is solo play. Um, and I think with Star Realms, they probably going to stick to the same um, system, solo play system, where you have essentially a 
boss um, and it has uh, four effects that it can do and based on a card that you turn over um, because there are, there are four um, classes or um, card types in um, Star Realms and depending on which one of those four you turn over the the boss does something to you um, and it it's looking like the solo in Frontiers is going to be pretty much like that except for the fact that they are also adding commanders to um, Star Realms and these are characters that you play as so your starting deck is customized according to what character you're playing um, and this is something they introduced with hero realms um, but they also brought in a campaign system in hero realms and i'm hoping that this means that Star Realms is moving in the same direction and eventually we will get a uh, some form of campaign play in Star Realms. Um, and I think that would be really nice. Um, I've not had a chance to play the Hero Realms campaign yet. Um, when I do, it almost certainly will be recorded for the channel. Um, it looks really nice and I think I would really like to see Star Realms go in the same direction as that um, and Frontiers could be the first step towards that. Um, the Kickstarter also had an add-on for a storage box for Star Realms uh, which is really needed at this point because there are lots of um, expansions. The, the expansions are all very small so it's, it's not like Legendary where you get hundreds of cards for each expansion and you, you just end up running out of space but you know still there are quite a few expansions already for Star Realms um, and I have all of them so a storage solution for that is going to be uh, very welcome um, that was meant to deliver in December um, however Having uh, backed their projects before, I was not surprised that it's been pushed back um, and then now looking at probably a March delivery time. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes back to April. Um, but that's fine. I mean, I, I don't back um, Kickstarter projects expecting them to deliver according to their estimated delivery time ever um, it's good when they do but you know things happen with board game manufacturing that means that there are delays and there are always delays in shipping and you know it is what it is okay so after that um, probably my next delivery um, is going to be in May um, but again that could get pushed back and that hopefully will be Mint Delivery and Mint Works. Um, I have played Mint Works um, once if I remember rightly. Um, a friend has a copy and um, when he was around he brought it over and we played a game possibly two. Um, really liked it. It's um, surprisingly good for uh, the size of the game it if you're not aware the um, mint games mint works and mint delivery come in little um, mint tins um, so yeah really small packaging and yeah works has I'm not sure how many cars I want to say a dozen maybe 20 cards in it and uh, not sure how many maybe again 20 or so little wooden white wooden discs that look like mints um, and yeah works is a worker placement game um, you can play it solo it plays up to four players um, 
And yeah, it's really nice. Um, Delivery is a pick up and deliver game. Um, again, I believe it will have a uh, solo mode and again play up to four players. Um, yeah, the, those I'm really looking forward to. Really nice little games. Um, then after that, we're probably looking at. Dice Hospital being the next game that I receive from a Kickstarter. Um, this game I backed uh, because I'd seen it and played a demo of it at UK, UK Games Expo um, last year. Um, really enjoyed it. It's um, it's a nice, puzzly, um, dice-based game um, where your the the dice represent patients, and you're managing a hospital, and you get the patients coming in. Um, the The value on the die represents how healthy they are, with um, one being about to die and six being healthy enough to release. Um, and you have various uh, rooms and doctors and nurses and specialists with various abilities and it's a, it's a worker placement type thing where you, you place your doctors and nurses in different rooms that allow you to manipulate the dice that are in your uh, wards, either spinning them up, and they, they um, call it treating, so increasing the value by one is treating a, a patient, um, and you can, um, yeah, sort of the room abilities are treat this colour or if you have treated this colour then also treat this other colour or if you've treated um, a patient of this number then treat another one of the same number that kind of thing so um, you know it, it's a it's a nice little puzzle and every single round you're getting more patients in and if if patients die then you get negative points and um, that kind of thing um, yeah, I I got to play test it a little and um, have met uh, Caesar that runs Alley Cat Games, who are publishing it. Um, and yeah, it's it's just really nice. And the the um, I saw what looked to be pretty much final components at um, Dragon Meat uh, a month or two ago. And they're they're really nice. the The artwork is um, reminiscent of computer games like Theme Hospital, where you've got um, the the rooms are all hex tiles, so they they've done sort of isometric um, graphics on them. Um, and the gameplay has a a very Theme Hospital feel to it as well. Um, and yeah. That's hopefully arriving in August, um, and I believe we'll be going to retail shortly after that. And is one I'm very much looking forward to getting. Another one that is down for an August delivery, but which I haven't. I've only backed at a dollar at the moment, and I'm deciding whether to put more money into it is a game called Root. Um, this is by the company that did um, Vast uh, Crystal Caverns um, and has a similar um, asymmetric gameplay. Um, what they've said is that the the different characters that you can play um, 
whilst they are all different and they have different wind conditions, um, there is a lot more similarity in terms of the way that they play um, compared to Vast, where in Vast every single character in the game plays completely differently. You are doing something, you're not only trying to achieve something different, you actually, the way you achieve it is completely different. Um, and so yeah, with Root it's a much simpler, easier to teach system where there are commonalities between all of the, the characters and um, they work the same way even though their goals are different. Um, at least that's my understanding. Um, and the Kickstarter um, finished sometime last year. It's due again to deliver in August. Um, wouldn't be surprised if that gets pushed back. Um, and it kickstarted with an expansion which provides solo play. Um, I'm, I'm tempted. It's, it's a style of game I haven't had the opportunity to really play. That kind of asymmetric gameplay. Um, I have the vast Crystal Caverns base game but I haven't been able to get it to the table yet um, partly because of just how different the, um, the different roles are and, and how hard that makes it to teach I mean I have a sort of understanding how one or two of the the roles work but not enough to actually teach a game um, I'm gonna have to sit down and probably play all of the roles solo before I can um, teach it um, and that's what's stopping me from backing root fully although it, as I said it is simpler I I don't know whether it's going to get played and that always makes it a um, difficult to back um, but I will make I got I can't remember when they said the um, the pledge manager has just um, become available and I can't remember when they said I, we, we've got to make up our minds on that but I'm I'm gonna put some thought into it and try and watch some videos if I can on the gameplay see if I can um, make a decision on that because it does look good and, and they're talking about it as being a sort of um, gateway into coin games um, and that's another whole series of games I'm interested in but I've never had an opportunity to actually play um, after that it looks like Nemo's War is likely to be the next thing to deliver um, and that I am very interested in. Um, I haven't played it as such, but I have a friend in the States who um, has it, and um, I we got onto Google Hangouts, and he played it whilst I watched and gave my input into um, decisions and that kind of thing. So. I've sort of played it without actually playing it, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, the the Kickstarter last year was for um, reprint of the base game, plus um, the expansion and a few little extra add-ons. Um, yeah, the, the expansion is new content. Um, it's expected to deliver in September. Um, because it's just a reprint of the base game and the expansion is quite small I expect that delivery date to be quite accurate so certainly before the end of the year I should have Nemo's War it is a fantastic game um, it's I think solo only um, you might be able to play it cooperatively um, you play Captain Nemo uh, Captain of the Nautilus and um, 
it has a really interesting um, set of wind conditions. Uh, you choose what type of wind condition you want to play. So you can either go for all out war or exploration or uh, I can't remember what the other one and, the, and there may be more than this um, but the you get um, oh yeah you can you can sort of um, get countries to rebel <laughs> and a yeah it's yeah it's really interesting um, the the number of different ways that you can win there are there are three or four and I can't remember what all of them are and exactly how they work um, but and, th and that also um, affects the way that you do end game scoring so if you're going for the all out war win condition then um, destroying boats is more valuable to you in terms of end game scoring whereas if you're doing exploration then you want to try and avoid destroying boats um, and so they're not worth as much however the way the game works you end up being forced to do a little bit of everything so it's a balancing act of um, uh, trying to do the things that you want to do to get the best score um, whilst also doing the things that are not so good for you but you have to do um, and, and basically there, there are um, ships that come out and they, they represent navies of various countries around the world that are hunting down the Nautilus because it's going round and causing things to happen and um, sinking ships and and the more you sink ships the more um, of a bad reputation you get so the more ships come out and and there's like a, um, if I remember rightly there's a point on the bad reputation track at which um, even harder more aggressive for ships come out um, yeah and you can um, you can sort of use your crew and the captain to to help you succeed in things um, and yeah it, it's just a really nice solo game with excellent um, production values fantastic artwork um, I think if I remember rightly it's um, Ian O'Toole did the artwork um, and all of the the ships are real ships and the, the they look like the real ships that they actually were um, and so yeah really nice attention to detail there um, and yeah as I said I've sort of played it and really enjoyed it so yeah very much looking forward to actually getting my hands on that and then finally um, on game that may be coming out early in the year or maybe delivering from Kickstarter early in the year but is currently unknown um, as to when it's going to deliver it was meant to deliver in December uh, of last year um, and the um, designer and publisher he's had quite a few problems with it um, he's been very open about that and and the issues he's had and um, but yeah, it's currently unclear what is actually going on and when it will deliver. Um, and that is um, the reprint of Deep Space D6 and its expansion. Um, if you're not aware, Deep Space D6 is started as a print and play game um, and it is purely solo. Um, you have a spaceship that you are the captain of and you have a set of dice that you roll and you assign them to particular stations on your ship that do various things um, and whilst you're doing this there are um, 
alien spaceships attacking you and you have to assign uh, dice to repair damage, shoot your weapons, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, these new ships come out each turn. And, um, it's just a it's kind of um tower defense style thing where you've got uh, enemies coming towards you and you've just got to survive. Um, it's 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 fun. It's um I I've, I've got the print and play copy of it. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting a, a proper uh, production copy um, because yeah, it's 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 a nice little and it's it's quite a quick game, um, so it's it's one you can get out and play in five minutes, and it's and it's just a sheet for your ship, small deck of cards, and I think it's half a dozen dice, um, six sided dice. Um, yeah, so it's it's portable, um, quick to play, and and it's enjoyable. It's a it's a really fun little game, um, and quite hard as well. Um, but yeah, I as I said, I it's not clear when that's going to come out, and hopefully he can get past the the various issues he's having with it, and um, it'll come out fairly soon. But yeah, that's that's it for Kickstarters. Um, there are or Kickstarter deliveries. Um, there are a number of um, Kickstarters that I know are starting um, in two thousand eighteen, and um, a number of games that I know and and expansions that I know are releasing in the new year that I'm also looking forward to. Um, the first of those is uh, Neanderthal and Greenland by uh, Phil Eklund. Um, this should be launching on Kickstarter in a day or two. Um, and um, yeah, I, I will almost certainly be backing <laughs> on day one, depending on the cost um but yeah it, it, it would have to be very expensive for me not to back on day one um these are okay if if you're not aware of phil eckland um and his designs he makes essentially two types of games um there are sort of historical um, what if card based games like uh, Pax Renaissance, uh, Pax Premier, and there's a third one that I can't rem remember the name of, but it's Pax something. Um, and there are then his other games which are science based mostly natural history in fact yeah they're pretty much all natural history science based simulation games um, and Neanderthal and Greenland fit into that category um, I will mention two others later um, um, that are sort of in the same category but separate um, systems if you like um, and one of the, the interesting things he's done with some of his games oh and also, also he does um, sort of engineering based sp particularly space engineering based games um, so High Frontiers is one that is um, fairly well known and that's a space exploration game um, I've not had the chance to play that um, in fact I've not played any Phil Eklund set um, I learned recently that I've owned a Phil Eklund for like the past 20 years and never played it um, so I dug it out the other day and I'm intending to get a play of it in um, fairly soon um, it's one of his older 
games um, called Insector, um, which is all about um, uh, creating insects and then, uh, if I remember rightly, you fight each other or, or you, and you basically you're competing over resources. Um, but yeah, Neanderthal and Greenland, um, they are games in which you are um, it's it's really hard they're really hard to describe because they're they're not you're not playing a character or you're not playing you are kind of playing nature um, and you have this um, uh, they are yeah they're simulating the development of humanity um, and so the Neanderthal looks at um, the Neanderthals, um, the early, early Homo sapiens, and there's a third um, race of humanoids um, in there as well. Um, which I can't remember, and I think there's a fourth one as well. Um, but yeah, you're, you're sort of developing their um, culture and their their brains essentially, um, and yeah, very interesting games. Um, and, and Greenland sort of follows on from that. So you can, my understanding is you can uh, play through Neanderthal, take the end state of that, and start then in Greenland with that end state and play on from that. And it, and it, it's sort of that that's looking at um, sort of some time after the. Um, events in Neanderthal when we then migrated out to various places and it's looking specifically at the um, branches of humanity that, that went to Greenland um, and then and you have various the game system um, I think and this is kind of sort of what you are playing when you play the game is you play the game system and it, it throws up sort of natural events and um, so you're trying to get your species to survive and carry on and and uh, make it through all these disasters and um, so on um, yeah very interesting um, system of games um, then after that um, and, I'm, and I'm not sure exactly when this Kickstarter launches um, but I believe it's either January or February um, in fact I think it's probably February rather than January um, is will be the Kickstarter for um, I've forgotten his name, Vital Lacerta's uh, CO2, um, and this is like the, the second edition, he's calling Second Chance. Um, it's got some really nice um, new artwork by Ian O'Toole. Um, the, I never got to play the, um, the first edition, but really wanted it. Um, apparently the gameplay in the new edition is somewhat streamlined um, and improved um, it's yeah I mean it's basically a game that it's it's a game about um, global warming and um, you play a government um, or governmental bodies um, uh, yeah, I think actually you're more of a business than a or a charity type 
organisation that, that are um, bidding to do various projects to try and reverse global warming, basically. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a really interesting. It's it's kind of the opposite of terraforming Mars, in whereas in that game you're you're trying to increase temperatures and change that planet um, in CO2. You're doing very similar kind of things, but in in terms of you know um, bidding for projects or proposing projects and then bidding for them and trying to change the planet but in a positive way rather than in a negative way um, although in although in terraforming Mars of course it is positive because you're trying to anyway yeah it's um, getting sidetracked uh, it it's an inter really interesting game and one I, I really wanted to um, play when I, I saw the first edition and then I uh, couldn't get hold of a copy didn't know anybody with any with a with a copy um and then i saw this second edition is coming along and I thought, okay i'm just gonna wait wait for the new version because it's meant to be improved and um uh yeah so that i believe kickstarting next month maybe towards the end of this month um and that's one i would definitely be backing then the rest I have on my list I don't have any um, firm idea of when they're going to release um, so I'll just go through them um, the first is an expansion for Dice Hospital um, there was in the Kickstarter last year a mini expansion and you could pledge for both I pledged just for the base game because at the time I couldn't justify getting the the mini expansion as well because um, it came with a lot of other stuff um, my understanding is, is that they are um, going to be releasing that mini expansion and possibly another mini expansion in a Kickstarter this year don't know exactly when I expect it will be towards the end of the year so they got fulfilment of the previous Kickstarter out of the way. Um, but yeah, just adds on to Dice Hospital. Um, looks really nice. Imperial Settlers, there's a new expansion coming out for that. Um, in fact, there's two. There's a small expansion that is just a set of cards um, uh, that um, common cards and additional cards for the existing um oh what's the word i'm looking for what are they called they're not races they are empires in um imperial settlers um and then later this year there will be a new empire coming out um Yeah, very little detail about that. The the small expansion there has been a little bit more detail, and it sounds like it introduces a lot more player interaction with you being able to attack opponents and steal stuff from them. And um, yeah, it's it's called we didn't start the fire. So the idea is that you're um, there is. Uh, direct conflict between the players and you're always blaming each other and it's nothing it wasn't me it was already started kind of um, idea behind it um, so yeah looking forward to that Imperial Settlers is a, a really nice game and I, I really enjoy it I, I like um, uh Portal games, um, games they 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 have great production quality, uh, very nice artwork on Imperial Settlers. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to both those expansions coming out. We then have a number of 
um, new games and and there's a reprint um, Snowdonia um, that is getting a third edition um, and the plan as I understand it is that it will be going to Kickstarter um, with all of the existing um, expansions um, in a single box essentially um, I've got a number of them but not all of them um, my understanding is I the during the Kickstarter you'll be able to pick up the just the expansions um, and not the, the the new base game um, my understanding is third edition will have some very minor um, rules tweaks but will be basically the same as second edition um, so I'm probably not going to pick up that because I've got the second edition uh, base game and it looks like the, the rules tweaks you can just implement them as house rules to second edition um, but yeah so I'm looking forward to that mostly to get the expansions and then yeah as I said a number of games that I I know are releasing but at least one I'm pretty sure won't go to Kickstarter the other two I'm not sure of um, following on from Snowdonia is a nice cup of tea that is by same designer um, Tony Boydale um, and I assume will be published by the same company because it's, it's his publishing company um, and it takes the uh, Snowdonia system um, and applies it to a different theme um, and it's something to do with tea plantations in India and um, Snowdonia is all about building a railway up uh, uh, Mount Snowdon um, um, and so yeah I, I I'm fairly sure there will be some kind of railway involved in a nice cup of tea but it's India and it's tea plantations and um, there are some changes to the to the rules it's it's taking the system of Snowdonia and applying it to a different uh, setting um, and yeah changing various aspects of it um, so yeah very interested in that not sure whether that's going to be kickstarted or just going to be straight to retail um, either way it's one I'm hopefully will be able to pick up uh, as soon as it's available and then um, going back to Deep Space D6 he is working on a multiplayer game now he um, the release date as stated on BGG is this year but given the difficulties he's having with the Deep Space D6 um, reprint I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed back hopefully not hopefully it will appear on Kickstarter this year and deliver next year um, but yeah Deep Sp it's going to be called Deep Space D6 Arm Armada and it is a multiplayer version of Deep Space D6 so you've got the same idea from what I understand you've got the same idea of, and I think each player has their own uh, ship but you are working together you're, you're basically ships from the same fleet um, and there are aliens coming to you and you've got the, the whole dice system and placing it on different parts of your ship to do different things repairing damage and shooting lasers and that kind of thing um, so yeah that's, that that I is very um, I'm very interested in and my understanding is it will have solo play so um, that's uh, something I always look out for um, and then 
finally in terms of new releases or kickstarters um there's a the new uve rosenberg game um which is another one that has a foreign name that i'm probably about to butcher but i believe it's called rake halt or something like that um the very little is known about this um currently on bgg it's there's a game page for it there's a picture of the cover and that's about it um there's like a couple of posts from the publisher saying it will have solo play even though in the details it's uh, listed as two to four player i think um but yeah, they're, they're saying it's definitely going to get solo play, but they've tweaked the gameplay a bit, so they've got to make sure the solo play works. Um, it's a it's an Uwe Rosenberg, so as you might expect, it's got something to do with farming. <laughs> um, uh, the from what I remember, it's your uh, growing tomatoes and other vegetables on Iceland and you are sort of competing to uh, attract the most tourists or something like that. As I said, there's very little detail on it, uh, but it's an Uwe Rosenberg game, so it's bound to be good. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about all that is known other than it's going to well it's meant to be released sometime this year it's a new publisher um new german publisher um so yeah there's nothing to go on based on the publisher as to when it might release um but yeah i'm i'm very interested in that i'm hoping it's going to be somewhere between <coughs> glass road and agricola in terms of weight um but yeah as i said very little known about it so we'll see when that actually comes out what it is um speaking of uvo rosenberg um uh there are a couple of things one new release that came out towards the end of last year um although i think in the states it hasn't actually become available yet um and a second new release that has just come become available in the uk and i think is still on pre-order in the states um and those are nusfjord and the Agricola Artifacts deck. Um, Nusfjord is, uh, from what I've seen of it, it looks like it's a similar to Glass Road in terms of weight, and a lot of people are comparing it to Glass Road, but the gameplay actually seems quite different. Um, I think because it's got the um, player boards that are like the glass road player boards um, with um, the forest strips and um, things you have to remove to then put buildings on that give you special abilities um, but from what I can gather that's about where the comparison to glass road ends um, other than it also being about a similar kind of weight and uh, play length um, uh yeah it's one i'm almost certainly gonna buy i would like to play it first because it's got uh, an interesting um share mechanic in it you're playing um fisherman oh, ice no not icelandic uh, danish i think fisherman um and you you go out and you you catch fish and and you have you're basically 
you can sell shares in your fishing company and that other players can buy and if you if they if other players have shares in your company then they get some of your fish and there are elders that do various things for you um, and in order to be able to use those you've got to feed them fish um, and, the, and there are very few resources there's like fish and wood and money if I remember <laughs> rightly um, and you obviously use money to build boats and um, so yeah pretty pretty light um, plays fairly quickly um, but it's it's a new way Rosenberg so it, it's it's gonna have good gameplay um, almost certainly um, I don't think he well he does make one or two bad games and one or two that are just mm. meh okay um, but yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that and and playing it and seeing what it's like. Um, it also has a solo mode, uh, quite an interesting solo mode. It sort of expands on the the solo play in um, a Feast for Odin, where you you have alternating player pieces, um, but in this you have three sets of player pieces, um, and you can also play a sort of campaign over a series of I think it's three games um, which is yeah also interesting um, and then the other thing Uwe Rosenberg I mentioned was Agricola Artifacts which is the new uh, deck that completes the A deck in the revised edition of Agricola um, which is the copy I've got so definitely picking that up and it's it's about 12 quid in the shops uh, so yeah that's that's a definite buy um, in fact I'll probably order that within a week or two then other than that um, I really want to get my hands on Spirit Island um, sometime in the <laughs> this year um, it's a fantastic, heavy, cooperative game. It has sort of elements of Mage Knight in the way that the, the cards work and the deck building. Um, I got to play this uh, in September um, when I visited um, friends in the, in the States. Um, it is such a good game. It's... Uh, it's really hard to um, describe how good it is. It's um, you are playing sort of the. Uh, it takes the idea of um, games where um, you play invaders going into um, a land and setting up your buildings and um, uh, planting fields and and doing all the things that you do to uh, take over the land but it flips it on its head and the invaders are the bad guys that you're trying to stop um, and it has sort of slight sort of pandemic-y feel in that the, once they're there they tend to spread and um, that kind of thing um, and um, but yeah you play spirits hence the name spirit island um, that they're um, and they have their I can't remember any of their names but they they have really um, interesting sort of thematic Name so you you play the earth or the sea or the wind or lightning, and it ah, all of their um, cards have um, similarly thematic names and um, abilities, uh, and you yeah the there are natives on this island that you are protecting 
Um, you can sort of persuade them to fight back. Uh, you can instill fear in the invaders, and uh, it's just brilliant. And, and like, it, it's the the island is obviously surrounded by sea, and you, you generally can't do anything with the sea, and the um, invaders can't go into the sea and but there is a one of the spirits is the spirit of the sea and um, you can then you can do things like flooding coastal regions and uh, it's just is such a nice game and it's um, and the, the sort of the thing well, the main thing it borrows from Mage Knight is cards that can do multiple things um, and you have a certain amount of power each time that you can use and certain um yeah there's there's limitations on how much you can do each turn and your cards can do multiple things so it is a bit of a brain burner in terms of and particularly when you're playing cooperatively with other players working out okay this is what i can do this is what you can do this is the situation we have on the island how do we destroy these invaders? How do we push them back? How do we help the natives? And all the time it's getting worse and you're getting what's called blight, which is, I, I believe in the, the rule book, it explains that it's blight from the perspective of the, the island, um, but it's it's just the invaders um, farming essentially um, and, and so you're trying to stop that you're trying to st stop them from changing the island um, and yeah it's just really nice um, and yeah I'm I really want to get my hands on that game because having played it I need it it's such a good game so heavy and so uh, so involved just just brilliant brilliant game design um, and then finally um, got two games that I'm looking to get more expansions for um, both fantasy flight games so there are lots of expansions already um, one of them I'm currently up to date with, and I plan to keep up with, and that's the Arkham Horror, uh, the card game, uh, living card game. Um, really nice uh, system, cooperative living card game system that is just so fun to play. Um, I play regularly with a friend over uh, Google Hangouts, um, um, but I also want to start doing, we're currently playing through the full, first full uh, campaign, the Donwich Legacy. Uh, when I've completed that and we move on to the next one, I want to play through that, the Donwich Legacy, uh, solo. Um, because you can play it solo. Um, whether I will do two-handed or one-handed, I'm not sure. I'll probably go one-handed because I'm not, and it depends on the game. I mean, like in my Flashpoint playthrough, I played three characters. Um, if I do a pandemic solo, I play multiple characters. But in something like a, an LCG way or a deck builder um, where you're controlling a a hand of cards and um, that kind of thing. I like to play those um, true solo where you are playing just one player's um, character rather than simulating two characters uh, or two players. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, it only... Yeah, it released, I think, last year or in towards the end of the, the year before. No, I think it was the start of last year. Um, and, um, yeah, so it, it looks to, to go on um, for 
the foreseeable future with uh, Mythos packs and deluxe expansions and we're on yeah the the second campaign cycle at the moment I think there's two or three more Mythos packs to release for that and then they will be on the, the third cycle and I think that will carry us through to the end of this year um, but yeah it's, it's really good the the, the um, narrative in it is is fantastic the, the gameplay is really good and they they're doing really interesting things with the, the campaigns and um, um, breaking the way the game works in in terms of what the the scenarios in the campaign call on you to do and and how they work it's just really nice some very nice clever game design in there um, and finally the other um, fantasy flight game um, I've got recently is Mansions of Madness second edition um, three of my friends very kindly bought me this for Christmas um, so currently I've just got the base game um, and I think there are five maybe six expansions available at the moment and more coming out um, so I'm going to be looking to add to that and again it's one I'm definitely going to be um, playing a lot more solo and I will start recording for the channel um, certainly I've, I've played through the um, introductory um, scenario a couple of times haven't beaten it yet um, but I've played it enough now to to be comfortable recording a play um, so yeah I, maybe the next time I play I'll record it maybe not I'll, I'll see depends on time and stuff um, but yeah I'm going to be buying expansions for that looking to catch up with the current releases and then going forward so I'll try and keep up with those um, if I can afford to um, so yeah that's basically everything that I'm currently looking forward to in the coming year um, I'm sure there will be other things that come up um, as the year goes on um, and that I'm just not currently aware of um, uh, I may do another one of these maybe halfway through the year or um, maybe not we'll see um, but thanks for watching um, I I hope to get this uploaded in the next couple of days um, and then I will be doing a couple of first plays um, and these are I mentioned earlier in the video that there were a couple of uh, Kickstarter deliveries that um, I wasn't actually expecting to <laughs> to arrive yet I thought when I recorded this that they I would still be waiting for them but they came um, it was either yesterday or the day before and so those I will be doing first plays of um, and they are another couple of Phil Eklund games um, two more from his um, scientific natural history simulation um, games uh, first is biogenesis um, this takes you from the origins of life to multicellular life um, and yeah it's so you, you're looking at a world that is still uh, being bombarded by asteroids still lots of volcanic activity still lots of tectonic activity um, and yeah just the the very beginnings of life um, taking the, the sort of um, 
primordial soup of chemicals and uh, developing from that the first basic single cell life forms and then having those evolve and take on new traits and eventually becoming multi-celled um, life forms and hopefully surviving um, and then this uh, carries on into bios megafauna uh, which is basically from beginnings of multicellular life all the way through to sort of the beginnings of intelligent life forms um, and again the the at this point the the planet is a bit more stable there's not so many uh, asteroids being thrown at the planet but of course you do still get big um, events not quite so much volcanic or tectonic activity but you still get those events um, and my understanding is this is this will then carry on into uh, BIOS Origins um, which um, is another one that I could have included in the upcoming Kickstarter part of this video um, but it's currently unclear whether that is going to kickstart this year or next year so I didn't include it um, but yeah these are a um, couple of really deep heavy simulation games um, and if you are aware of Phil Eklund at all you know <laughs> how much of a, a task it is to uh, learn these games um, I'm really looking forward to it. There's, these are going to be the first Phil Eklund's that I've actually played. Um, but I'm also not looking forward to it because, from what I understand, the, the rules are really dense. And um, once, yeah, my, my impression is once you actually get to grips with it, the games aren't difficult to play, but they are complex and so difficult to learn um, but yeah I will be doing first plays of both of those at some point in the very near future and almost certainly will be the next two videos I produce on the channel um, so that just leaves me to say thank you again um, I would be grateful if you could click on the links in the description um, there are, I will put in my um, Facebook page and Google Plus page. Um, it would be great if you could join, like and share those as well as um, sharing this video uh, and of course liking it and promoting it as much as you wish to.